Hello everyone, DK Productions here, and today I'm here with a set so big it barely even fits on my display. This is set number 75978, Diagon Alley, and it's demanded for ages 16 and up, and has 5,544 pieces. This set includes 14 minifigures, being Rubius Hagrid, Fred Weasley, George Weasley, Molly Weasley, Ginny Weasley, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Harry Potter, Draco Malfoy, Lucius Malfoy, Gilderoy Lockhart, Garrick Ollivander, Florian Fortescue, and the Daily Private Photographer. Let's take a closer look at some of those amazing minifigures. The first minifigure is Ron Weasley. These are when he has his nice little all covered up robes from the second movie. He has a nice little Gryffindor lapel right there. And he has the same face print from 2018. He has these nice um, sand blue legs. And I overall think this is definitely a good inclusion in the set. The Hermione Granger minifigure of this set has the exact same torso print as Ron Weasley. And she has her same 2018 face and new hairpiece. But her figure has the brown legs. And of course there's Harry. He has the same print as the other two. Um, but he has dark brown legs, and he has his same face print and hair piece from 2018. One of the more disappointing figures of this set is Molly Weasley. And although this torso print is completely exclusive, we've seen Lego print on these new dress pieces. Why didn't they do it here? This is a re this is like an expensive set, and I would expect more. And her little accessory is the is a copy, is one of a couple copies of Gilderoy Lockhart's Magical Me. And this is a sticker, and it probably should have been a print. And then on the inside, it's just a blank tile. Ginny Weasley with the face print. Again, like, come on, Lego. Why are we reusing a face print from a different theme? But other than that, I really like this Ginny hairpiece, and her torso print is exclusive, and she has a nice black Short legs, she also has a copy of Gilderoy Lockhart's Magical Me with the same no printing on the inside. Now, this is George Weasley. He doesn't have any accessories. And one common theme you'll start noticing about this set is barely any, literally one of the figures in this set has leg printing. And that's pretty disappointing because I would expect a bit higher. But overall, this is a really great minifigure and I'm glad that we're getting it again. He has a really nice pinstripe brown suit and he is green which means that's how you know he's George. He has a nice bow tie with the W on it for Weasley, for Weasley, and he has the nice tomboy red hair, and I really like his face expression. And for an almost identical minifigure, we have Fred. Now, Fred has basically the same print as George, but you can see instead of having a green undershirt, he has an orange undershirt, and he has a red tie. Their face prints are also different, but that doesn't really matter. Overall, these two figures are really good, and I'm really, these are really nice inclusion. This set does include Hagrid, and one quick disclaimer about mine, the printing on the eyes isn't great, so there's a lot more black than the usual white, so that might look a little creepy. This is the same Hagrid they've been using since 2018. He has his pink umbrella, his trench coat. Overall, it is a very good figure, but just a bit disappointing about the printing. On to some of the exclusive figures, we have Lucius Malfoy. This is the only figure in the set that has leg printing. Kind of disappointing, right? The other disappointing thing about this figure is they use the Lex Luthor face. It does work, but I feel like they should have done it a little better. And I also think they should have used the regular tan for his hair and not this bright blonde. Overall, this is definitely a very good figure and we have not gotten him in a really long time. And this is a very great update. The printing on his torso looks really nice. He has some nice fur and he definitely looks really rich. And his accessory is this nice um, short black stick. Now we have one of the reasons that probably a lot of people really want this set is because of Gilderoy Lockhart. Again, lacking the leg printing. But this is a great figure. We haven't seen this figure in 18 years. Granted, there wasn't, there was like a s eight year gap between the Harry Potter sets, but this is such a nice inclusion and it's so nice to finally get him. And you'll notice that he has a purple cape on the back and a yellow on the inside and it's basically a dual cape, which I think is really cool. 
His face expressions are really nice, and the dog winter hair is really good for this set. One other thing, though, I'm pretty sure his suit was like a light blue, but eh, Lego picks their battles. Next figure we have is Garrick Ollivander. This is a different figure to the one in the promotional Diagon Alley, and he has the more screen-accurate torso of the red coat. He has the nice hairpiece and a new accessory, and this is a wand box. Let's take a closer look at that. The wand box is a new and exclusive piece to the set. It is a 1x3 box with a 1x3 tile on top that perfectly fits a wand. And one thing I like about this set is none of the figure's accessories are wands, so you can kind of have the play experience of the figures going through and getting their first wands. Overall, this is definitely a really cool new piece, and I'm excited to see how people use it in, like, builds and stuff. One of the exclusive figures that we've never seen before is Florian Fortescue. He owns the ice cream parlor and is actually a pretty fun inclusion. Even though we don't really see the ice cream parlor that much in the movie, this is exactly what he looks like when we do see him. He has a nice sweater vest with a nice print. He has a bow tie. And his accessory is a spoon, and he has the same hairpiece as Ollivander. He has some nice gold glasses and a beard. Overall, this is actually a pretty fun figure, and I'm glad we got it. And the last and least interesting exclusive minifigure is the Daily Prophet Photographer. We see this guy a couple of times, and I really like his build for an old-fashioned camera. But kind of lackluster, to be honest. I do really like his torso print. He has a very similar pinstripe suit to the Weasley Brothers. He has a nice white undershirt and a black bow tie. He has like a very angry expression and he uses, he uses the witch's hairpiece and the scarecrow's hairpiece, which I think is definitely a really nice fit. Just wanna say a quick spoiler warning before I show this figure, but this is an exclusive figure that is not shown or marked that is included on the box, but this is Diagon Alley Harry, and this is an amazing figure. I think they really nailed this, and I think this is a really fun inclusion because, I mean, it's a print that we've never gotten before, and it's kind of a version of Harry that we've never really seen. This is from when he was just taken out of the little shack from the Dursleys in the Harry Potter movies. This is an amazing print, and I think it was a really good inclusion. And overall, yes, this is one of the best figures of the set. Also included in the set is this little plaque. It says, Welcome Harry to Diagon Alley, Rubius Hagrid, and then it has the Lego logo and the Harry Potter logo. This is pretty fun, and you can put any too many figures you want on it, but in the instructions and on the box, it recommends that you put Hagrid on it and this Harry Potter minifigure. So I think this is really nice for people that really want to display this set. And let's take a look at some of these incredible builds. Looking at this set as a whole is kind of surprising. When I was seeing all the reviews on YouTube, this set definitely looked big, but I did not expect it to be this big. It is so long, and I definitely recommend if you're thinking about buying this, Make sure you have a space to put it because I did that and I'm so glad I did because I now have this and I would have been like, oh my god, where am I going to put this? But from left to right, we have Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor, Flourish and Blots. We's in here we have a little Nocturne Alley with a nice little sticker. We have Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, Quality Quidditch Supplies, The Daily Prophet, Ollivanders and Scribulus writing increments. Let's take a look at the inside of Ollivanders and Scribulus. The interiors of these buildings are so really nicely detailed that it makes up for like the minifigures. This is like so good. Like they went above and beyond with this. Let's take a look at the inside of this shop first. So the first thing that I really like that they did is I can tell that probably some people are going to want to display this flush with the wall, but you can't do this with a big old staircase in the way. So they put it on a rotating plate so that it can just slide right in and then they don't have to deal with it or you don't have to deal with it. And now this whole building is completely flush with the wall, 
which I think is really good. But you can fold out that, and on the inside, there's three little wand boxes and then some blue and purple boxes that are not actual boxes. And inside each of the actual wand box piece, there is a wand, all of different colors. Over here, we have a really nice build for a cash register. There's a, yeah, there is the cash register right there. There's a little paper that is a sticker. And note, pretty much everything you see in here is a sticker. There's not really any prints, which is definitely disappointing because stickers are a pain in the butt. I do really like how they built that little bit right there. I think that looks really nice. And I think it looks like cool and like actual woodwork. And behind Ollivander, there's a little wall with wands and boxes. And you can see right here, there's a little wand box that you can pull out and fits really nicely in there. Over on this side, we have a little display window right there with an open wand box with a wand in it. And we have the same thing over here. And that's pretty cool. There is a bunch of the wand boxes in the set, which is really nice. There's also a door and a green carpet. If we walk up the stairs, you'll see there's a nice little spinning chair right here, which is cute, and you can put a figure in there. And I really like how they made this drawer design. It looks really nice, and I like how they have one open and one closed. There's another wand box and a candle. And then there is a whole nother little area for wands, and there's another wand box right there. On the inside of Scribulus, there's a wall right here, and on the wall, you can see on the bottom, there's some ink jars, white quills, red quills. I believe the tans are rolls of parchment paper and then some fancier quills. Right there, you can see there's a scroll and then there's just some quills right there. A nice lamp, some ink and a quill and a little pen. And this quill right here is the Shakespeare one. And that one right there is the Knights one. And I do like the little table and yeah. And then when we go up, we have a nice little desk and drawer right there with the new Ninjago skull piece. I was so excited when I saw that because I wasn't planning on buying any of the new Ninjago sets. So I didn't think I was going to get that piece, but now I do. And it is a really cool piece. I really do like this little mold for the skull and the bottle, the potion. I think that looks really good. And the drawer. And then there's a nice little rug and a couch, which looks really good. And then a fireplace. And when I was building it, I was like, did I miss a step? Because they don't ever tell you to put fire in it. So it's kind of confusing. And then go up to the very top and there's some nice little chimneys. And over here, we can see that Hedwig is flying with a printed The Boy Who Lived Daily Prophet. And there's nothing really on the roofs. So let's take a look at the next building. The next building, I really mean the front of Ollivander's. Like, come on, the front is probably the best part. The facades of these buildings just look so nice and so complete. It's just very pleasing. And compared to the oldest di older Diagon Alley, oh my gosh, these are so much better and so much more screen accurate. I love the bay windows on Ollivander's. And I do really like the, sti I like the stickers and how they look. But it is disappointing that there's such a big gap in between Ollivanders. And right here you can see it says Makers of Fine Wands since 382 BC. And then we have another Ollivander sticker. You can't really see it that well, but in the display window there is wand boxes and a lamp. Wand boxes and a lamp. The door does not have a door handle. On the inside it does. And there's a nice little window right there. And the Ollivanders logo. And the little roofing bit up there looks really nice. The chimney looks interesting. Not my favorite, but you know what? It exists. And then there's two cute little owls right there. One is winking at us. Then when we move over to Scribulus, it has a similar window. But this one just juts out just a tiny bit. And I think that's a really cool technique. That technique is used so much in this set, but it's pretty cool. Under here, we use like almost like a sewer, sewage area. And then there's a nice little door. A little spot for a candle to burn some more windows and then a really nice little flush area i just think that looks so good up here we have a poster and it basically just says buy your stuff here there's again that little technique 
where I think that just looks really nice and it adds a lot of depth into the set, which just looks really good. There's another one of those there. And there's a little sticker right there that says fear of flying classes. I don't know what that means. And then there's the flying headwig with the little letter, which is just a Technic clip attached. Now let's look at another building. And the next building is the second biggest building and the worst building. Why Lego? Why would you pick bubblegum pink? Like, it's not even screen accurate. Like, come on. But other than that, I love this window at the front. And this is actually, if you look right there, it's at a slight angle, which I think is really good. And they just achieved that by using Technic pins. And there's a nice sand green roof. And you can see two either bludgers or quaffles right there. And then a snitch, <laughs> the golden snitch. And then I really like the windows. And I love how they use the headlight bricks right there because you can see how the line of printing right there these are prints thank god how the line of printing matches up with a little bit i think that was clever and when i was thinking about the set i thought oh i wonder if they did that but up here you can see there's quality quidditch and then over here says supplies and that doesn't bother me bother me because it's very clearly supposed to be like that then the daily profit from the outside this is really really impressive and good looking I think even though it's a very simple build and it doesn't use a lot of complex pieces, how they put the simple pieces together just makes this just look so good. I think this is one of my favorite bits of the set. Even though it is the smallest part, it just looks so good. And that is a sticker on the door that just says Daily Profit right there. There is a little flag right there that says Quidditch. Then there's the Hogwarts logo. There's a nice little lamp right there which is on the other sets. Bummer that you can see that blue. And then there's a little sign that says the Daily Profit. And I really like how they built that. And as you can see, the main color of this building is a very bubblegum pink, which is not screen accurate and pretty disappointing. But you know what? You win some, you lose some. This building, however, I will say, was really easy to build. This was the easiest building to build because the only part that was complex was this little window sub-assembly. And then everything else, you're just placing bricks. It was really simple. And this one, I would say, took me the least amount of time, maybe two hours at the most. And then up here, there's a nice chimney. And I love that we see these little um, newspapered out windows from the Stranger Things set return. And of course, there's a nice stone at the top. And then at the very top, there's a little pile of old newspapers, but technically they're new. Let's look at the inside. Now, the inside of this build is also kind of lackluster, but let's look at the Daily Profit first. On the wall right there, you can see there's just a bunch of stuff. You can pause if you want to read all that, but I'm not going to. There's a nice bin of Daily Profit papers, and only one of them is printed. And then at the very top, there's a spider thing, and you can see how that little door is built. One thing that's disappointing to me, though, is I feel like they should have put another little level right there and then put an office, and I just feel like... They should have done more with this interior. Then over here, on the inside of Quality Quidditch, you can see the Nimbus 2000, and, or the Firebolt, I, no, it would be the Nimbus 2000. And then over here, there's a bunch of clothes for playing Quidditch, some beaters, and then we got Hufflepuff robes right here, and then at the upside stairs, we have Ravenclaw robes. So people can, like, buy these for really expensive and make a whole Hufflepuff for Ravenclaw team. Then over here we have more brooms, and it says feel free to test fly any of our brooms. And here we have some quaffles and a beater, and then we have robes in the colors of the Hogwarts teams. And right there, there's a sticker that says QQS, so quality Quidditch supplies. And the last detail that I want to point out is right here. They put these bricks all in between, and even though that does nothing for the actual Lego set, that is a detail I love because it's like showing how a building in real life would work, as those are like all the planks and like the structural thing for the actual building in real life. The very top, we have an open box, which I think is a really cool build, scabbers, and some cheese, and then some more daily profits, and then right here... There's just a little door that you can open and maybe the rat can go out or something. This is sadly my least favorite build because of the really inaccurate colors and the lackluster interiors. 
this is definitely going to get not that good of a ranking for me. Let's take a look at the next building. The next building is actually really was really surprising to me. I really enjoyed this build process and this one actually took me the second longest to build, which is surprising because it is the smallest building. Right here we have Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor and flourishing blocks. Right here there's a really nice sign, which is a sticker unfortunately, but it says flourishing blocks and I love how they built that. Right here there's some nice little outside book displays, which look good, in a very similar print to the one on quality Quidditch supplies. Right here, we have some really nice builds for seats, and I've actually, when building mocks, I've actually done this before, but they use the small toothpiece, and then they just put holes in the bottom. Then right here, there's a table so people can sit outside and eat. Unfortunately, these are not stuck down, so if you want to, like, pick this set up or pick this building up and move it, those will, unfortunately, fall off. There's a lovely awning right here. I just love that. And one thing used a lot, in particular this build, are the black makeup pieces. I actually don't have that piece and I'm pretty sure it's a lot more common in like friend sets, but that was just a cool piece to get. And I was like, wow, that's a nice build. And up here we have the same roof design or similar roof design that they use on the Privet Drive set. And a really nice little sign, or it's not really a sign, but like showing that, oh, you can eat ice cream here. And I think that's a really nice build. You have the same inset window, which just adds more depth. And I love how they mix the red bricks in. I think that was a really cool idea. Like a nice little lamp and the same roof up there. Over here, you have this. I love this little, like, all these stickers right here, which have, like, one of them says, says, bookseller, reading room, bookseller, reading room, book binders, book binders. I think it just looks fun. There's a really nice window here, and I think this is a little, I'm not saying that it's nicer than the Ollivander's one, but I think it's just a nice build. These, however, are a really clever build. These are supposed to be little dragon statues. What they did is they took the Ninjago um, dragon sword piece, made it in black, and then they stuck it down, and then they put the flippers on it. It's just such a clever build. And then the roof is also really nice as it uses different angles of the slope pieces up to the top where there's two chimneys. Let's look at the inside. On the bottom of the inside of the ice cream parlor, you can see there's a nice little dish where you can scoop ice cream and again, that black makeup piece. This is relatively loose, so just be careful when you take this set out and move it around because that might fall out. There's also that new glass piece from series two of the Harry Potter minifigures and there's some chocolate ice cream in there. And the same glass piece we've been seeing for a really long time with white ice cream. And there we have another one of the orange glasses and some of the regular glasses. And I do really like that this is the only like properly tiled off floor, which is kind of funny. But yeah, really like the counter build. I think that looks really nice. And the black little, well, Technically the counter is the black bit, and then this is like the little booth area. And then right here you can see all the different flavors. We have chocolate with peanut butter, black beer and raisin, and bat juice and earwig. On the top of the ice cream parlor we have like another little living quarters, which I just think is so cute. There's a cute little lamp right there with a sausage piece holding it. There's a cute little chair. I don't like that they used a pin there. They could have used something else, but they didn't. There's a nice little brick built rug and a tea table which I think overall looks really good. On the inside of the bookshop, I think it looks really nice. And right there we have a little desk and on the front of there is just a tile piece that has Magical Me on it. We have a stack of these books and I just love how these books are built. They're just so clever and I love that they did that. Right here we have a nice little bookshelf and again, right here, we have a nice little build showing that there's structure in the building. And there's a sticker that says dragons and then alchemy. And then again, there's a little fold down stairs, stairway, so that you can actually like access the inside. At the top, we have a sticker that says flourish and blots, which is like on like a sheet or something. We have a book right here, which has Wingardium Leviosa, the swish and flick, and then a nice cute little lamp. And then another stack of books and a cute little bookshelf. 
Definitely one of my favorite interiors and one of my favorite builds of the set. Let's look at the last and best building. Last little thing in Flourish and Blots. They do include this nice little desk where Gilderoy Lockhart can sign his copies of Magical Me, but they are just built and there's no stickers on them. But that is a kind of a nice inclusion. And of course, the best and last building of this set is the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes and Nocturne Alley. The Nocturne Alley has a nice little crooked window and Nocturne Alley, and I think this is just what it should have been. And there is a sticker there that says Nocturne Alley. What I don't like is that a lot of the bigger YouTubers, like Just Too Good and m &R Productions, are all saying this is alluding to a future Nocturne Alley expansion because of these little pins on the back. When really all those pins are there for is so you can put the buildings back to back and save a bit of space. But looking at the Weasley's Wizard Wheezy's Joke Shop, oh... My gosh, I love this. This just looks so good. I think they nailed the design. And this is a building that we've never seen before. We've seen all of these buildings before, except for this one. And we've even seen the Fred and George, but not this building. So starting at the bottom, we have a door there and a door there and a really nice bay window and a window there. If you can see on the inside, you can see two little legs with some nice stickers on them. In there, you can see a body and an arm. And then right here, you can see an arm. There's a little knob right here that if you push it, it makes his hat. It makes him raise his hat, which I think is pretty fun. And I think if you wanted to, you could probably automate that feature, but I don't think it would look all good because it'd be bulky up there. I do, however, think that they should have, in this situation, used a sticker. I just think that would have looked a bit better. But you know what? Lego did what they did, and... I'm not going to complain too much. Right here we have a nice little like wind balloon thing, which looks pretty fun and it's orange and purple. And right here we have some more nice windows, a nice window there. There's a lot of, of these window pieces in the set and a lot of the clear window like glass pieces. And then the stickers all around it that says Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, always wheeze, gar always wheeze guaranteed. We have... What does that one say? The best in jesting. The best in jesting. And then we have shenanigans for all. Here's my, Here comes my problem. You can line up these stickers fine. Weasley's Wiz. And then Erd Weasley. Wheezies. I don't like that gap right there. That just frustrates me. Because I, but I, you kind of have to like make a choice if you want this to line up or if you want that to semi line up. Then right here we have Petrifying Products, Disastrous Delights, and then, again, Masterpieces of Modern Magic. This one doesn't bother me as much because it's a break in the words, but right here where it says Wizard, and it, like on Ollivander's where they break it up, it's kind of just frustrating. Then the main color of the building is the orange and then the purple, and they use their nice light lavender color, which is kind of funny. They have a pink and a purple building. Um, and then a nice black roof. And then if you, but if you look on the back, you have these stickers. So one says Jinx Off. One of them has the Weasley's logo. And then one says Dark Mark. I feel like if they had like changed their, this purple color to a little bit darker like this, it just would have looked better because to me, this is too light and, or maybe just mixed in a bit more gray than they did. But this building is definitely the best looking. And then they have the same lamp right there. Then, looking on the inside, oh gosh, this is just the best. So right there we can see we have a little display with the baby Minecraft heads. And they put stickers on them on one side. We have nice little bottles of yummy stuff. And then there's a little thing down there, which has... Then, on the inside, oh my gosh. So, right here, we can see there's a nice little hazard-taped register. We have a purple little thing there. And a nice sand green stand with a little jar, some little baby Minecraft heads with stickers, and some jars with purple stuff in it. On the back, you can see we have, like, some trinkety little stuff there. We have some bottles of stuff with sparkles, more bottles of stuff. And then back here, 
I will say back there that I feel like they should have put more. But this is a little sub-assembly of the Love Potion Station. This just looks so good and so cute. I think this is a good inclusion. Under the stairs, we have some more boxes, which are dancing doxies. And then on the other side, it says something else. But when you look at the stairs, I think it's fun because it says up, up. Or it says, more magical mayhem, up, up. And then there's a little arrow, which is fun. And then when you get to the second level, you see these balloons. And they fall off too easily, which is very frustrating when you're trying to review something. But they are the... I thought these were all going to be a new piece. But they're actually the BB-8 body piece, just not printed and in a new color with the green. And you actually do get an extra green one, which is pretty, kind of fun if you wanted to switch it out. And I'm just going to leave those off now. Up here, you can see we have a little bin with some signs in it. Let me just see if I can get that out. Yes. So on these, there's just a little printed lollipop pieces. And I will say for bigger hands, it is hard to get in there. I can still get in there, but I've seen some other reviews where it can be hard. Right there, we have basic so fred weasley's basic blaze box and i think that's really fun although those are all stickers and i was putting those on last night and i was like oh i don't want to do this right now i love the railings they're so colorful and it's just so fun to look at this is like just just very fun to look at right here we have some more boxes then we have some guy and that's actually supporting part of this but it's fun there's a cup and then there's the powder that Harry uses to disappear. And then right there, we have some more boxes, some pink jars, some green jars, and then some white triangle things. Then going up the last set of stairs, right here we have a crystal, which only came in the city sets, which is pretty exciting. Then we have some Weasley's Wizard boxes, and those are all different stickers. We have some more boxes there, some more trinkety stuff, some jars and stuff, and then some action figures. And then right in there, you can see the mechanism, which is pretty cool. Looking at the inside of this building as a whole, this is the best. And then there's nothing on the inside of Nocturne Alley. I mean, I guess if you really wanted to, you could like put a figure in there and like they're evil. Actually, that fits really well, but you can be like they're evil conniving or something. But let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box for this set is absolutely massive. And you can see on the box, it is the 16 plus set and not the 18 plus. And I definitely think that's a good idea because this isn't, although it will take a while, this is not a complicated build. It's just a lot of placing bricks and a lot of like tricky spots. So I think 16 plus was a good idea. You can see all the minifigures labeled there except for the exclusive Harry. And then you can see the piece count, which is a lot of pieces. And then, yeah, this is the standard like really big D to C set box. And you can see in the corner, there's Wizarding World. I will say when I first saw the leaked image of this, I was kind of disappointed. I was really hoping there was a Gringotts bank, but so things to keep an eye out for in the future is I think next summer for the Harry Potter wave, there's no way they're not going to release a Gringotts bank. You can't have Diagon Alley without Gringotts, and I think that's why they didn't include it. I think they should make a Gringotts bank, and then I think they should make a little Borgen and Burks because that's an important bit. I think they should put the disappearing wardrobe in there, and then with the Hogwarts expansion for next year, if they do one, they should put a wardrobe in there so that it all connects up. That's and the, But the only thing I can really guarantee is a Gringotts Bank. Because, like, come on, Lego. They're not going to do that. That would just be bad marketing. Then, on the back of the box, it's just a bunch of features and stuff. And if you look, if you wanted, there are four instruction booklets, for one for each building. So there's that one. There's this one. And they're all around... 150 pages long the weasley's wizard wheezes is a bit longer but there's the four instructions and there's the box so my final verdict on this set is it a good set yes it is an amazing set and i am so glad to have this because i've wanted a diagon alley for so long now is it worth buying it well it's definitely not going to go on sale ever and this is going to be staying on the shelf for a long time i can guarantee that but right now, 
It really depends on what you're into. If you really like Star Wars, I would say wait and get the Moss Eisley Cantina. If you're really into like just fun builds, then get this one. If you like Harry Potter, get this one obviously. If you like normal builds, not themed builds, I would say maybe go for something like the roller coaster. If you like cars, go for the Lamborghini. And it's kind of like, I really like this set and I'm definitely glad I got it. But I can tell, like, if I wasn't into Harry Potter, I wouldn't know any of these little details and it just wouldn't be as fun. So I would say maybe stay away from this set if you're not huge into Harry Potter or like it in general. Then, unfortunately, I would say stay away from it, no matter how good it is. And then there's the minifigures. I'm just going to say it. The minifigures are so disappointing. I feel like for a set like this, you need to have at least 20 minifigures. Like... The Moss Eisley Cantina is less expensive and you get five more minifigures. Like, what? There definitely should have been some miscellaneous witches and wizards so that you could fill your streets. They needed to put leg printing, arm printing. They should have gone all out with these figures. And the last thing I'm going to say, stickers. Oh my gosh, there are so many stickers in this set. It's like unbelievable. They needed to do more of these little things as prints. Like, they definitely could have printed that Flourish and Blots thing. They could have printed all of those tiles on the, on, right there. They could have printed the Quidditch thing. They could have printed Daily Profit. They could have printed a lot of these, and they didn't. And it's just disappointing, because when you spend a lot of money on a Lego set, you really hope that you're getting the best. And to me, this doesn't, doesn't feel like the best. So, I recommend it with reservations. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. This is probably going to be a really long video, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure you comment down below which building's your favorite and if you're disappointed about the minifigures like me. And make sure you subscribe, obviously. Like the video, comment, and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!